Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is May the 15th. It's hard to believe that we're halfway through the month of May already. But uh, what a beautiful day we have here in Beaver Dam this morning. It's a little foggy outside. It looks like the rains might have stopped and everything has got uh, a sense of green, a brightness to it this morning. Well, I am, uh, I'm glad that you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is a time where we gather Monday through uh, Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then to hear some, uh, some words uh, from a devotional book that we're using based on John Wesley's sermons. If you happen to be joining us live like Dick and Nancy are this morning, I invite you to uh, drop us a line there in the comment box. Let us know that you're out there. Let us know what's going on in your part of the world. And, uh, and let's just stay connected. I think it's a great way that we can, uh, we can feel like a community over the, the wilds of the Internet. So, uh, oh, oh, Mary Helen, Jack and Mary Helen, sounds like you guys are having a good day going to pick up your granddaughter. Oh, wow, that's uh, granddaughter and your daughter. That'll be fun. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into our text this morning. Um, our text today comes from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and this is chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. So uh, here are these words from Matthew, the Gospel writer. No one can serve two masters. Either, oh, and by the way, this is Jesus. Um, this is Jesus speaking. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, let's kind of keep that in mind as we're listening. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life what you'll eat, what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do so much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Ooh. Friends, the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some pretty good words from Jesus this morning on worry, isn't it? So uh, we're going to spend some time uh, focusing in on one of the verse. We're focusing in on verse 28 this morning. And uh, as we do, we'll hear it from different translations, and we'll spend some quiet time uh, between the readings uh, so that the that the the scripture can come come alive for us, so that the Holy Spirit can work and uh, maybe illuminate the text in a new way. Maybe your mind gets drawn to a particular word or phrase. 
So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's take a couple of nice deep breaths. Let's focus our scattered senses, senses on the presence of God. Let us ask God to open up the scriptures to us this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 28 from the King James Version. And why take ye through thought? Huh, let's try that again. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. From the New Revised Standard Version. And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil nor spin. From the Common English Translation. And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. From the New Living Translation. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. And from the message translation, instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. 
They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our daily devotional book entitled Renew My Heart, which is based on some of Wesley's sermons. And today's uh, is entitled No Anxious Care. And it does focus in on this verse 20, 28 from the sixth chapter of Matthew. So let's listen to what, 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 what Wesley has to say about this text. The grass of the field, in verse 30, is a general expression, including both herbs and flowers. If God so clothe the word, the word proper, pro, properly implies the putting on a complete dress that surrounds the body on all sides. It beautifully expresses that ex external membrane which is like the skin of a human body, at once adorns the tender fabric of the vegetable and guards it from the injuries of the weather. Therefore, take no thought, how kind are these precepts, the substance of which is only this, do yourself no harm. Let us not be ungrateful to God, nor so in injurious to ourselves as to harass and oppress our minds with that burden of anxiety which God has so graciously taken off. We will not therefore indulge these unnecessar unnecessarily, unnecessary, useless, mischievous cares. We will not borrow the anxieties and distresses of the morrow to aggregate those of the present day. Rather, we will cheerfully repose ourselves on that heavenly Father who knows we have need of these things. He has given us the life which is more than, more than meat, the body which is more than raiment, and thus instructed in philosophy of our heavenly Master, we will learn a lesson of faith and cheerfulness from every bird in the of the air and every flower of the field. Some pretty good words from uh, Wesley this morning. Um, as I was preparing today, I turned to my Wesley Study Bible, and it had just a, a couple of notes that I thought were worth sharing this morning. Let's see. Uh, for this particular verses, um, the notes read. For those who seek after God's rule or kingdom of the world, in verse 33, concern for wealth and possessions conflict with God's provisions for the necessities of life. In John Wesley's view, whosoever seeks this first will soon come to seek this only. The phrase weak flesh in verse 30, I mean, I'm sorry, the phrase weak faith in verse 30 appears elsewhere to reference to the disciples. The anti-Gentile language of verse 32 emphasizes Jesus' focus on the quote-unquote the lost sheep, the people of Israel. So, uh, you know, there's some good stuff there. I, I think Wesley was, was, uh, was right in his take on this particular scripture that... Um, we do run the risk of when we start focusing on things of the world, on the wealth of the world, that sometimes we lose sight um, that all things come from God and God will give us what we need. I don't know about you, but uh, I struggle with this quite a bit um, because 
Because we are told so often by those around us that we need to save for the future, that we need to put money aside for a rainy day, that we need to, to, um, to take care of ourselves. And there is a lot of truth in that. Um, but where I think this uh, ties in with this scripture on not worrying about anything, I don't think that's healthy either. Um, because we do have an obligation um, to ourselves and to our family and to our community as a whole um, to do the things that are right, to do the things that are building the kingdom. But we also need to remember that God will give us what we need, when we need it, and in the way that we need it. And I think that's part of, of what Jesus was getting at in the, in the teachings today, is that look around. God takes care of everything. The flowers and the trees bloom each spring. The fruit grows on the trees. Do we make that happen? Absolutely not. That's all God's work. So God's got this. We just need to have a little bit more faith. Try not to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and to live in the present, to live in the day, expressing our joy and our thankfulness to God, our creator. So uh, that's kind of my take on this. Would love to hear your thought. I'm sure we've got varying uh, opinions on uh, what it means not to be anxious for tomorrow and how to live into our faith each and every day, not worrying about uh, the food we eat or the clothes we wear. It's, uh, it's, it's lots of stuff there to discuss. So uh, let's go ahead and get ready to take on this day. Let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, you provide us with all that we need. You provide us with the breath of life, with the dawning of each and each day anew. And we are truly thankful for those gifts. God, sometimes we let our, our humanness get in the way and we try to control things um, when we should really learn just to lean in to our faith and to lean into, um, into the thought and the belief that you will give us what we need. You will provide us with the encouragement, with the strength, with the inspiration, and, um, and with the spirit to follow you. And we just thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out upon our lives. We thank you for the joys that we live each and every day. And God, we thank you that we know that you are with us in times of struggle, whether those struggles are physical or mental challenges or whether we're just struggling with maybe being alone or just not happy with the way, uh, with the season of life that we find ourselves in. God, just continue to pull us close, continue to draw us nearer and open our eyes to see your presence, open our ears to hear your voice and open our minds to the movement of your spirit. Lord, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.